When San Diego police officers were sent to Linda Vista on a routine disturbance call last summer, they had no idea what to expect. Officers Ron Ebeltoff and Harry Tiffany were probably not expecting a man with a gun. They never saw Thomas Ciotta approach them, and they didn't live long enough to evaluate what went wrong. Ebeltoff and Tiffany were two of perhaps 100 police officers to die on the job in this country last year. Thousands more were wounded. As society has become more violent in recent years, the situations involving police being shot and police shooting people have become more commonplace. Knowing when to use their weapons can save a cop's life, and it can save bystanders' lives. For example, police officers held off shooting for as long as they thought they could a couple of years ago, but suspect Samuel Brown made what was termed a menacing move, and officers shot. In countless other situations, police held their fire and were able to control situations without injury. Okay, bud, come on out. See this, the gun? Strike your ear. Make the move and you won't have any head. You understand? In North Park recently, a robbery suspect was giving up when he came out the door, but it could have been a hostage situation instead. Police had to decide. They held their fire and it ended peacefully. I think it's very necessary that the public be aware of the fact that uh, being a police officer today is a very dangerous job. That uh, at any given time, uh, an individual will seek him out as a target, not necessarily because he's the individual that. Uh, um, they're looking for. He, he represents the police, the uh, uh, whole police world in general, and they'll use him as their as their victim. Cal Flores is the training officer for the Narcotics Task Force. The statistics about when and often how cops are killed are embedded in his mind, and he's using them in a class he's teaching to plainclothes and undercover officers, a class on how to survive on the streets. We're not trying to cause you any undue hassle. We're simply trying to make you be aware of the fact that you need to stay in shape. You need to practice certain uh, uh, techniques that are going to allow you to stay alive. We can't show you the faces of the agents in this room. That's one way they survive. The other is to learn and relearn the basics. For example, the newest techniques on how to handle a potentially dangerous suspect. The outcome they want is like this, instead of this. Why does an officer get killed? Well, there are a number of reasons, uh, probably, without trying to second guess those, those officers. The uh, reasons are going to vary from situation to situation. Um, sometimes uh, a lack of experience, uh, sometimes uh, a certain amount of complacency you know, on the part of the officer doing the routine things, the daily things, uh, um, uh, sometimes causes him to have a lack of respect for the dangers involved. I could ask a simple question and perhaps I could put it in a proper perspective for you and that question would be, um, you want to go home tonight. You want to be successful in your job, you want to go home tonight. You want to see your kids, you want to see the wife, you want to continue on tomorrow, you want to be alive to collect that paycheck. Any questions on that? Any problems with that kind of thinking? Because if there is, those kinds of individuals have no place even in a class like that. They ought to get up and leave. A crook knows when he's going to shoot. The police officer does not. And if a cop chooses wrong, the public is unyielding in its criticism. So the lessons these officers are learning involve judgment calls when to use force, and when to hold back. I learned a little bit about what they face on the streets by going through part of the course offered at Duffy Town. Tomorrow, we'll look at how I did and how the make-believe training helps on the streets. Bring your front side up on. It is the classic police academy method for teaching officers to shoot. Unfortunately, though, it's not always the way a shooting on the street involving an officer may really happen. There are people who can pile figures about what's most likely to happen during a police shooting. It's surprisingly short, for one thing. Unlike in the movies, a shooting incident is normally over in less than three seconds. And unlike at the range practice, the shooting normally happens in close quarters, between four and 12 feet. Normally, no more than four shots are fired. Just what good is it for police to know all these things? Well, hopefully so that more shootings can be avoided. At Duffy Town, officers from a variety of agencies in San Diego County are undergoing unique training designed to be more of what they would encounter on the streets. This is a real situation. Police believed someone was hiding in a trunk of a car. 
no chances were taking finding out if it was true. At Duffy Town, a mock situation that may have been what occurred if there was a suspect and he had fired on police. To complicate things, let's add five more suspects, two of them about 50 yards away. The clanging sounds you'll hear after some of the shots are hits. An officer who can shoot well and is probably well trained makes it look easy. I tried it. It isn't. Sullivan is a customs agent. He can also shoot a gun as well as Clint Eastwood could, if Clint Eastwood could really shoot. We've been taught, and this has been drilled into us many times, if you fire the weapon what? after you load it and, it, and the weapon, the bullet does not fire, we've been told to count to 10 and wait. Not here. This is combat situations, all right? You fire that weapon, it doesn't fire, keep going. There's no, this is not a sporting event. You don't have you, know, you can't call time or procedural error. You've got to, you just got to keep firing. You've got another bullet coming around, fire it. The focus of the Sullivan method seems to be to teach undercover officers to shoot accurately and quickly and do it under extreme stress. Load that gun with one round and hit that target. Load it. <laughs> How do you load it? <laughs> a bit of stress. You're liable to do some really dumb things like one guy did. A uh, 14-year member of San Diego Police Department last time we were out here. He turned around and he loaded uh, shotgun shells into his, uh, into his uh, loading port upside down and backwards. Oftentimes, the news media and the public are extremely critical of police officers during and after a shooting incident. With that in mind, I was put through a realistic gauntlet in Duffy Town. The object was to search out gunmen and take care of them without killing a number of bystanders. Again, it's harder than they make it look. Upstairs. 